But greetings and welcome to Timberborn, how to build districts. Which can sometimes be a little confusing since the tutorial last I played it did not really explain how districts work at all. Eventually your initial settlement will get large enough that you start contemplating expanding outwards and you begin to reach the limits of your initial district as well as uh, potentially needing to get resources that are out of range of your current district. Thus, you need to build another district. Such as if we click on the district center here, you can see that the path the beavers take, that this uh, li end of the red line here is as far as they can go. If you connect anything beyond this line, it will not be considered connected to the district and beavers will not man it as a job. If you have like a gathering post right at the very end of the line where it's still connected to the line, they will still man it because a job and they will, you know, go further past it to the maximum range of whatever building they're utilizing at the time. The first thing you need to do when making a district is separate the uh, pathway into two separate districts. Since uh, originally if you go to the paths and structures, and you try to put a district center down on its own without doing anything, then it won't let you. It'll say districts must be separated by a gate. So we can just go here, we'll delete this path. It's like the district gate that's right next to the district center in the paths subfolder. And place that. It's free like any other pa pathway here. So now that this is placed, these two roads are considered different districts at this gate marking point. So now I can go and place a district center right here, which is also free. Makes it easier to set up districts. So now we technically have a second district. Obviously there are no beavers though, so the next part of creating a district is getting the resources over to it. So that your initial beavers have, you know, proper food and water supply if it's an area like up here where there's nothing except for wood. And sending resources to another district is simple, but you need additional buildings to do it. Which are found under the labor tab. And what you need to build are the distribution post and the drop-off point, which you have to unlock both of these separately for about 250 point points each. The distribution center is pretty big. Command be banned by 10 beavers if I'm remembering off the top of my head correctly. And I usually place the distribution center in between both districts so that the beavers manning it can go into the town, get the resources, bring them back to the building, then they will have a shorter trip to take them to the uh, district you're, you are sending them to. In the drop-off point, I kind of do the little bit of the same there since the beavers of the new district can afford to walk a little bit. So we're just kind of put that drop-off point here, which a drop-off point is a free building as well. Right now... We have these going up, I'll explain the uh, distribution limits and how the resources work between transferring between each district. This drop-off point is considered District 2, so if I click on its district distribu distribution limits, it will bring up this, you know, window that shows all the resources and what limits you have set for them. Low is basically what the district will keep in reserve when it is sending resources to another district. So if low at zero, it will send everything it has until it is out of it. But if you put low at like, say the berries at 20, District 2, if it's send sending its resources to another district, will send them until it reaches 20, and at soon as soon as it reaches 20, it will stop and it will keep 20 in reserve. High is kind of the opposite. High is uh, what the limits on what you're bringing into the district. So at the default uh, high at 100, means it'll bring in 100 items into the district, then the di district will not bring any more of those items into it until it drops it below, below that number. And if you uncheck high, then it turns it to infinite, where that uh, district will just receive any and all of that resource that any other district is willing to send it. And when I initially, initially make a district, I alter uh, the not high numbers because you only have 300 space available in the drop-off point, and you don't have any warehouses, so you can't hold, like, literally everything you want. So I just put down uh, everything down a little bit lower. It's only going to matter for what you actually set up as a trade route so you don't have to alter literally everything. You just need to alter what you are bringing into and out of the district. 
All right, now that we have those numbers set, we have the uh, limits for this district set up. We just need to wait for the distri distribution post to finish building. All right, the distribution post has been completed. As you can see, it also has a district distribution limits on it as well. This is for, you know, the district it is in. Just same as the drop off point, they are universal between each other, but this one is for district one, which the one I was altering was for district two. Which for the your main district, you probably do want to set some limits to how much uh, you're going to send out. The last thing you want to do is put your own district into a uh, shortage of some kind because it sent everything to another district. And then here comes the last part of transferring resources. You have to establish a route, which is pretty simple. You literally just select your distribution post, go over to the right window, click add route, then you find the drop off point on the map that you want to establish the route to and click it, which then brings up which good you're gonna transfer over to it. Each route is only one good. So you have to set up multiple routes in order to get everything sent over that you want to send over. And now that we have those selected, you can click on your drop off point and see all the trade routes, that, trade routes that are coming into the district and what they are bringing in. Which to note, the distribution post can only establish a certain number of trade routes. 10 trade routes is its limit. So you can't really it's harder to make specialized districts and send everything every between districts to uh, other districts to satisfy their needs, like, you know, food district, wood district, so, stuff like that. I mean, you can have, obviously you can have districts that build more of one resource than the other, but to some extent you kind of need to have a little bit of self-sufficiency between districts to some extent with like some of the short, a few of the shortcomings made up by with the uh, trade routes. Like, this district's shortcoming is going to be water, obviously. <laughs> it's going to need that continually shipped in because it has no way of getting additional water on its own. Now that the trade route is set up and resources have been brought in, are being brought in, we can now uh, send beavers over. Alright, I waited a little bit longer in order to uh, get water over to the new district because they were bringing everything over still. But to send beavers, you just click on one of your district centers, in this case District 1, my main settlement. Click on Migrate Population and it will ask you where you want to send them. Then District 2 is the only other available district right now, so it automatically selects that. And you can tell it how many you want to send over. So in this case, we'll just migrate four beavers over. And they should all run over right now. I think that's them right there. Oh, there they are. They will just run right over. They don't teleport or anything. They run over to the district. So they need to have an available path to get there. And now these beavers are considered part of this district and are no longer part of your original district. And you can start, you know, setting up buildings up in this new district for whatever goal you are trying to establish in this particular area. And that is how you create districts. I hope you enjoyed, and hope you found it informative, and we'll see you in another video down the road. Bye for now.